right, here's our warm-up for the day. Go ahead and simplify these lovely radical expressions. Just more practice with simplifying radicals. Making sure you're recognizing where you can use a trick, where there's a shortcut. I'll give you a few minutes to work on this and we'll go over it. Okay, let's start working them. And if you're still working on number three, then go ahead and spend some more time on it. Okay, so number one, I'm going to capture these and use a whole screen to solve these. We need to know how to start these problems off. You need tools to know where do I go first. So on this first one, 9 is not divisible by 5. And you can't even reduce that. There's no number that goes into 9 and goes into 5. So what you would want to do first on a problem like this is you would want to separate. I have one that won't deselect. You would want to separate those into square root 9 divided by square root 5. Then you're going to say, oh, this is a perfect square. The square root of 9 is 3. So now I have 3 over square root 5. And then I realize that I am disobeying one of the rules. I have a radical in the denominator. Since that is not allowed, I'm going to multiply by a fancy number 1. This is just the number 1. And that's going to get rid of the radical in the denominator. It's called rationalizing the denominator. Square root 5 times square root 5 is 5. 3 times square root 5 is 3 root 5. So that's the final answer to number 1. How would you do on number 1? Check. Good? If you had your cameras plugged in, you could just give me a thumbs up and I would know. Okay. Next one. So on the first one, I separated the radicand. On this one, I'm going to combine the radicand. 24 is divisible by 6. So we are going to actually divide them because they are both radicals. They're both under the square root sign. So it's legal. We're allowed to divide them. 24 is divisible by 6. So this is going to equal 3 square root 4, right? 24 divided by 6 is 4. Wow, that's a perfect square. So this is just like saying 3 times 2 because it's 3 times the square root of 4. 3 times 2. So the final answer to number 2 was 6. We made that ugly fraction turn into a beautiful integer. All right. The most complicated one, number 3. Right now, are we allowed to add these? Oh, we're plugging in cameras. Good. Right now, are we allowed to add these? The answer is no. Now, can we do any work to that first one? 3 root 2 over 5. No. That one is completely simplified. So let's do some work to the second one. Let's do some work to square root of 2 over 5. Square root of 2 fifths. So if someone just gave me the square root of 2 fifths, the first thing I would do is separate my radicand, because I can't do anything with that. And then I would rationalize my denominator because I don't have any perfect squares. So square root 2 times square root 5 is square root 10. Square root 5 times square root 5 is 5. Does that look right? Okay. For some reason I thought that we could end up combining these. We can a little bit. So this is 3 root 2 over 5 plus root 10 over 5. Now, we have to think about not only how do we, what are our rules for adding fractions, but what are our rules for adding radicals as well. In the world of fractions, are we allowed to add these together? Yeah, because they have a common denominator. So in the world of fractions, we are totally allowed to add these. But in the world of radicals, we are not allowed to combine that numerator. So the answer to this problem is 3 root 2 plus root 10 over 5. 3 root 2 plus root 10 over 5. Is that what y'all got? We could make root beer out of all these roots. That's a good one, Avi. 
Okay, Pythagorean theorem worksheet answers. This was not a tricky worksheet. You simply um, were taking right triangles and using radicals and solving for missing sides. We up the ante by making some of the answers irrational, whereas last semester we would have just found the decimal approximation. So check your answers and let me know which ones we're going to work. Number 11 is a very simple apl application of Pythagorean theorem. Sorry, this was a 10. Be careful because sometimes we rotate the triangles on you. The hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. The hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. So on this one, I'm going to go straight to this step. I'm going to go straight to 10 squared minus 3 squared equals x squared because I know I'm looking for a leg. I'm not looking for a hypotenuse. So I know I'm going to end up subtracting. So 100 minus 9, 91 equals x squared. Then we know we're going to take the square root of both sides. So then we're going to need to factor tree the 91. Yes, 13 times 7. Well, unfortunately, that's prime and that's prime. And so our final answer is the square root of 91. So next we're looking at number 16. This is a special type of triangle. It's an isosceles triangle. How do I know it's isosceles? Because both of those sides are 4. So I know that if I can get this value right here, I'll call it A, I know if I can get A, all I have to do is double it and I'll know what X is because that segment is an altitude but it's also a median. So we're going to do Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to do 4 squared minus 1 squared because I know I'm looking for a leg, not a hypotenuse. And so 16 minus 1, 15 is equal to A squared. A is the square root of 15. You can't really simplify that at all because it's 5 times 3, there's no pairs, there's no partners. And so this is the square root of 15, this is the square root of 15, and you can either think of it as adding them together or as doubling it. Either way, you will get 2 root 15. Okay? Number 17, last one of the day. Same thing almost, except we're going the other way this time. We are looking for the legs of the isosceles triangle, and we're given the base. Um, we know because this is isosceles, tick mark, tick mark, we know that we're allowed to divide that 12 by 2. I wouldn't normally just take a segment and cut it in half. I wouldn't normally assume. But this is an isosceles triangle, and we're allowed to assume. It's not really assuming. Do you spy a Pythagorean triple? Remember, there's 3, 4, 5, but if you double it, you get 6, 8, 10. So I didn't even have to do any Pythagorean theorem because I went home and I memorized my Pythagorean triples. You'll see that one a lot. 6, 8, 10 comes up a lot. Today's lesson is called Pythagorean Theorem Converse. So think back to first semester when we learned all those C words, conditional, converse, counterexample, all of those things. A converse is when you take the hypothesis and conclusion. Good, Victor! Converse, reverse. They trade places like Freaky Friday. The hypothesis and the conclusion simply trade places. So if a triangle's right, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Good, Quan. So the converse is if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then the triangle is right. So I'm going to give you triangles, and you're not going to know if they're a right triangle or not. You're going to try Pythagorean Theorem and see if it is a true statement or not. So go ahead and try this one. Is this triangle a right triangle? Does it deserve a box or does it not deserve a box? So um, because we're doing the converse, you'll learn why later, but I'm going to write this backwards because we're doing the converse. I'm going to write this backwards. So I wrote it backwards on purpose. That was not a mistake. I'm not going to put equals. I'm going to put a question mark over it because we're determining if it equals or not. So does c squared equal a squared plus b squared? Okay. Well, 50 squared is 2,500. 
48 squared plus 16 squared is, oh, we were so close, 2,560. So we conclude that this is not a right triangle. He doesn't deserve a box. No, it is not a right triangle. Okay, try this one. 13, 85, 84. Okay, we're saying yes. I didn't trick you because I put C in the middle. I didn't list them from shortest to longest. That didn't, that didn't trick you at all? So you're going to do 85 squared on the left, and then on the right you're going to do 13 squared plus 84 squared. And when you looked in your calculator, you got that they were perfectly equal, right? They were equal. So yes. It's a right triangle because C squared does equal A squared plus B squared. Okay, so if a triangle is not right, like that first one, that was not a right triangle. If it's not a right triangle, then what is it? No, talking about angles. If it's not a right triangle, then what is it? There you go, V. If it's not right, then it has to be either acute or obtuse. Those are its two choices. So how do we tell? Unfortunately, I'm just going to have to give you the stuff. I'm just going to have to give you the answers because you all need to take your quiz. So we are going to skip the quote unquote discovery part, um, but you're going to be just fine because you're going to have the information. Okay. If the triangle is not right, it is either acute or it's obtuse. Now, if it's a right triangle, we already know this, C squared is going to equal A squared plus B squared. If it's an acute triangle, think as cute, little, small, less than. If it's an acute triangle, C squared is going to be less than A squared plus B squared. And if it's an obtuse triangle, think greater than, obtuse. If it's an obtuse triangle, then C squared is going to be greater than A squared plus B squared. It is so important that you write it backwards. Do you see how it's the converse? And so I'm writing C squared first. If you don't write it backwards, you're going to forget how this theorem works. Okay? Less than, acute, greater than, obtuse. Y'all are so sweet. Yes, Ganesh, that's the lesson. Y'all are so nice to, to think that this is cool. I love when students think it's cool. Okay, let's try some. We're not going to try this one because this is a Pythagorean triple, so I know it is for sure a right triangle. You're going to memorize your triples, so I'm not even going to do the math on that one. 5, 12, 13 is a Pythagorean triple. Let's try the next one. So we're going to do C squared, then we're going to do A squared plus B squared. Okay. 15 squared, 12 squared plus 10 squared. This one is 255. This one is 2, oops, 44. Remember, the sign is going to eat the bigger number. That sign is so hungry. Which number's bigger? This one's bigger. It's going to eat 255. Is that a greater than sign or a less than sign? It's a greater than sign. So this triangle, I didn't even need to look at the triangle. I knew just based off of its side lengths that it was an obtuse triangle. Pretty cool. Let's try the next one. 3 squared, 2 squared plus 2 squared. 3 squared is 9, 2 squared plus 2 squared is 8. So once again, it's going to eat the bigger number. We have another obtuse triangle on our hands. Ooh, on that last one, which one of those is C? You might have to plug that in. Plug 2 root 3 into your calculator. Oh, it's 3.4, so it's not the biggest one. Okay, so 5 is your C squared. And then this is your A, you need to square it, plus your B, you need to square it. So, I'm going to change colors. 5 squared is 25. Ooh, what's 2 root 3 squared? You have to square the 2, which is 4, and you have to square the square root 3, which is 3. So it's 12. 
And then these cancel. So it's just 12 plus 2. So man, C squared is winning every time. We got three obtuses in a row. You'll find some on your homework where you'll get some acute ones. Okay? All right.